Hey folks, welcome to a brief video where I'll talk about the history behind this week's film, uh, Letters from Iwo Jima. This is the uh, companion film to Flags of Our Fathers, also directed by Clint Eastwood. However, this is about the Japanese build-up to the attack and also the Japanese response during the attack. So you're going to see a lot of individuals, all with competing uh, visions for how to defend the island. Lots of ego between different officers and even some drama between Japanese officers in the army and then Japanese officers in the Navy. And you realize that within the Japanese military, there's a lot of disagreement on a variety of tactics. And this will overall help the Americans in the middle of the battle for Iwo Jima. Now, um, the setting of the film, it's in, it's in, it's in 1945. It's going to cover the Japanese uh, preparation for the American attack um, or offensive on the island. It's a slower war drama, so don't expect too much immediate war scenes, but there is a lot of fighting. Um, supposedly, the stories uh, of each soldier are based off letters that have been fed on the island, but that wasn't true. Um, the Japanese Army and Navy, no, the, Amer the Japanese know that the Americans are quickly heading towards Iwo Jima. Iwo Jima is officially considered Japanese soil, but it's pivotal because... Whoever controls the island controls access to the Japanese mainland because bombers can be flown from Iwo Jima uh, to the homelands of Japan then, and, and thus be, they become vulnerable. So it is really pivotal but that the Japanese hold on to the island as long as possible or overall defeat the Americans if possible. However, ego, miscommunication, and different priorities by the Army and Navy are going to weaken the overall defense capabilities. However, it is going to be very tough for the Americans to, to, to defeat the 21,000 Japanese, 21, Japanese soldiers that are stationed there. Um, many Japanese soldiers believe in a code of Bushido, which is from the age of samurai in Japan. Basically, there's glory to be had in fighting. However, the only way to achieve glory for you and your family name is to effectively conquer or kill someone else um, or to achieve it through victory. However, if you are not victorious in the battle or in war and someone else bests you or defeats you, then you need to redeem your – the only way you can successfully redeem your honor is to go through bonsai, which is the action of actually committing suicide by taking a sword and uh, moving it through your chest. There are other obvious ways of doing that. But essentially, a lot of Japanese garrisons, instead of reinforcing different parts of the island, they're actually going to go and commit suicide – um, helping the Americans over the long term. Now, the individuals you need to know are as follows. General Tadamichi Kirib Kiribayashi, he is the leading general tasked and stationed at Iwo Jima by the uh, leading authorities in Japan to help prepare the island for its defense. He's picked not only because he's an experienced veteran, but and he's also highly intelligent, but he also has experience with America. He was educated in America. He actually spent quite a bit of his time as a young general building relationships with American officers. He would eventually come to fight in the war. Um, and so when he's stationed at the island, he knows the, the what the Americans are capable of, and he knows that eventually if they were to fight toe-to-toe, -to -toe, the Americans would probably defeat the Japanese uh, with much difficulty, but overall the Japanese position would be pretty weak. So Tadamichi tries to unite all the officers and try to make the island as fortified as possible. However, there's going to be a lot of disagreement between the officers about what's the best way to defend the island. They're actually going to be very condescending and disrespectful towards him, and they're going to call him an American sympathizer because they he always carries around an American handgun, which to them, they're like, why is he doing that? Um, overall, Kiri Bayashi is actually going to significantly defend the island. He's going to prepare the def defenses in a way that's much smarter and more intelligent than what the other officers had. He's going to prioritize Mount uh, Suribachi, which is on the no north side of the island, and it's the most defensible part of the island because he realizes that the Americans can quickly sweep over the beachhead. They can sweep over other parts of the island, but if we dig tunnels in the mountain, that we're going to be able to dig ourselves in. The American Navy can't bombard us or destroy a lot of our people or defenses on the on top of the soil. So if we go underground, station there, bunker there, and we defend the most critical parts, we can significantly last way longer and we have a higher chance of victory compared to just um, if we stay with what the other officers wanted. So the attack going to happen. 
Tanimichi is going to receive news that other garrisons around the island are being defeated by the Americans. And in order to try to prolong the, the battle, Tanimichi is going to organize, uh, inform or command the other inferior generals or other off, excuse me, the inferior officers to regroup in key parts of the island. They fail to listen to him because they don't respect him, some of them. And then two, because they all commit suicide, uh, which leads to further acceleration of the Japanese defeat on Iwo Jima. Saigo is a, an interesting character in the movie. He, you see him at the beginning and at the very end. He is one of the constant presences in the movie. Uh, he is a major character, but he represents just an ordinary Japanese baker uh, with a pregnant wife and child who's drafted into the war. Prior to the war as a baker, his bakery was often raided by the Kempen Tai, which are actually the Japanese military police. Uh, they come in, they ask for uh, fees to help protect the bakery from themselves. However, they often just steal all the sugar and supplies that uh, Saigo would have used for the bakery. So he's impoverished. He's uh, basically robbed by the government. And now he has to tell his pregnant wife that, hey, I think he promised I'll come back to you, but he doesn't know when or how. So Saigo is kind of interesting because he's not going to really do a lot of fighting or he's not really going to fire a gun throughout the battle in the movie. Instead, he's going to be running around from regiment to regiment trying to survive as long as possible. And some students have controversial views on him because they believe, they think that he should fight, but then other people understand why he doesn't, that he's just trying to get back to his home because he's fighting in a war he doesn't believe in. Um, he is going to befriend other characters. Uh, some of his friends are going to die due to dysentery because the water on the island is unclean. Uh, there is a small village on the island that is quickly evacuated by Tadamichi prior to the battle. However, they use the supplies in the village to help build their defenses around the island. Uh, another friend of Saigo in the company is Shimizu, who's actually a former member of the Kempatai. Um, but throughout the battle, Saigo's going to witness the death of everyone, um, and he, but he's going to be able to avoid having to commit suicide even when superior officers tell him to do so. Shimuzu, Shimuzu is another main character of the film. He is a former member of the military police. However, he got kicked out or discharged when he refused to shoot a dog that was being too loud. He, his, he was on patrol with several other officers of the military police, and the commander, not being the nicest person in the world, they're essentially being a jerk, orders that a barking dog is killed by uh, Shimuzu. Shimuzu high, uh, sh fires a shot in the air, pretending like he killed the dog because he's got some humanity to him. However, when the commanding officer realizes or hears another bark, he quickly beats Shimuzu, discharges him, and then Shimuzu is sent to go fight uh, in at Iwo Jima. The people in his company don't trust him. They think that he's a spy sent from the mainland to make sure that they behave uh, and do what they're supposed to do. However, in the fighting, he's going to flee with Saigo at one point, get, cap get separated, get captured by Americans. And after he surrenders uh, and is talking to another soldier about you know, he they had heard that Americans would give you a meal if you surrendered, which they really need. Shimizu is going to be shot and killed, um, and later found by Saigo in another retreating garrison uh, on the island. Baron Nishi is a celebrity in Japan. He actually uh, is an Olympic gold medalist in horseback riding prior to World War II, uh, and he's also well known among Americans as well for just how great he is at horseback riding he's widely respected he decides to enlist and fight in Iwo Jima even though he knows it's lost cause and he'll probably lose his life but he does it because that's what he believes in his country and so he is going to be a close ally and loyalist to Kuribayashi um, and actually be charged with leading uh, a garrison at a pivotal point in the defenses in the caves of the, the island his garrison is going to be defeated while in the battle um, and it's, he's going to order his uh, inferior officer his assistant to essentially take all the soldiers, head north to try to regroup, but in, but he actually covers his face with a blindfold and orders and asks his inferior officer to hand him his rifle. He later commits suicide um, after also losing his horse in the earlier parts of the battle. Lieutenant Fujita is a subordinate officer of Kiribayashi. He helps prepare the island for the American uh, attack. Um, he also helps Kiribayashi navigate the drama between multiple officers. So as a loyalist, Lieutenant Fujita actually comes with Kiribayashi to the island, helps him try to navigate the rumors that are going on, how the officers are attacking, talking behind his back, and help him know, hey, these people are trying to plot for your demise. Sam is an ordinary American soldier who is captured. Uh, he basically falls into the tunnels 
and the Japanese officers, like specifically Baron Nishi, try to figure out what to do with him. He's later shot and killed by a Japanese soldier, uh, and Baron Nishi finds a letter from his mom in his pocket. When Baron Nishi reads the letter, he starts to realize how how much of a just ordinary human being Sam was, and what the mom writes about is something that Nishi also re- uh, relates to. So. This helps the movie kind of build the narrative that these are just ordinary people all fighting in a war that they don't believe in, that if they had, if they were given a choice, no one would be at. Um, Yet in times of war, things are different. Captain Tanita is another inferior officer, but he's very condescending and disrespectful of Kiribayashi. He leads a, a machine gun garrison. And he's ordered after he loses he loses his position. He's ordered to regroup with another Japanese garrison on a different part of the island. However, believing that he's failed, realize uh, thinking that just to like retreat or regroup would be you know, the ultimate form of dishonor. He orders his entire garrison to commit suicide with grenades, including Saigo. But Saigo's able, able to escape, um, and so a pivotal part of the defenses fall when Captain Tina. At Captain Tanita basically has his entire, his entire garrison kill themselves. Lieutenant Okubo, uh, Kubo, excuse me, is Baron Nishi's subordinate officer in the caves with Baron Nishi. Baron Nishi, after losing his position, uh, orders Okubo to basically go across the island to head north, to try to regroup and recuperate and continue the battle. However, Okubo, along the way, finds the bodies of Shimizu and another prisoner, another Japanese prisoner. They eventually come across an uh, come across an American machine gun nest. Akubo orders a charge. However, everyone, many of his soldiers actually die in the charge on the machine gun. And instead of regrouping and defending the island, Akubo basically makes a foolish decision and has a lot of his men killed, including himself. Lieutenant Ito is the last of the inferior officers that you need to know about. He is very disrespectful of Kiribashi as well. He thinks he knows what's best. And when he loses his position and much of his garrison is destroyed, he, instead of regrouping and helping lead the army, uh, the Japanese army to continue fighting, he's actually going to go on a one man mission and take, find as many explosives as he can and try to kill out as many Americans as he can. But he foolishly just kind of waits around, but doesn't kill anybody. So eventually after he realizes that everyone else has basically died around him while he could have been useful, he wasn't. And he eventually surrenders to the Americans without even, really providing anything much to the Japanese war effort. If you have any questions about this movie, please feel free to reach out to me. Uh, I hope you know you're appreciated, and I'll, I look forward to seeing you in class. Do you realize that this is a slow burn, and while you're going to be able to compare Flags of Our Fathers with this movie, expect some differences. Why did Clint Eastwood make two movies in the same year that focused on two different perspectives of the same event? That's what I want to talk about with you. Uh, please get excited.